Okay, so we're trying to figure out the growth rate of Oracle's free cash flow and how do we come up with a good number? As we said, this 19% seems a little bit high just given their uh, their their large size. The, the law of big numbers starts to take hold here that growing by 19% a year seems seems difficult as you get bigger and bigger that growth rate becomes more and more difficult to to obtain. Um, if you look at next year, they have to grow by uh, almost two billion, over two billion dollars in free cash flow next year, just to maintain this growth rate in the next year, and then it's going to grow um, exponentially over time. So, 19% seems a little bit high, just given their sheer size. Um, all the other metrics out there seems to say that they've done it before and they've held pretty consistent. If we look at return on equity. Uh, it's been pretty consistent over these time periods in the 20s. Uh, cash return on invested capital is up near 30. Uh, everything points to this metric being right, this 19% being right. It, I just don't think just because of their sheer size that they can they can pull that off over the next 10 years. They, they may be able to pull off similar growth in absolute terms, but as a percentage basis, I don't think 19% uh, is, is an adequate number just given their size. So with that in mind, I think I'm going to take off 25% of that and get them down to about 14% growth um, just just because of the sheer size. I think that, that should compensate us for the large size of the, of the business now, and uh, given their, their business nature, that that absolute number should, should hold true as well. Um, in addition to that, they do they are buying shares back, as we saw with Bed Bath and Beyond. They were buying back shares at a pretty regular clip, um, not nearly to the ratio that uh, Bed Bath and Beyond Beyond was, but uh, in proportion, they're still buying back shares. So I would give them another one percent, uh, based upon that analysis, uh, that that they're buying back shares in their growth rate, because as a shareholder, our, our growth rate is going to be a little bit higher than the actual company's growth rate due to the share buyback. So 14 and 1, I get 15% for the growth rate. Uh, that seems reasonable to me. Uh, so let's move on to the adjusted free cash flow. As we said before, um, this 13 billion here, this 12.8 billion, does not take into account the acquisition costs of four, over 4 billion that they have every year and that is something that we want to add back to capex so taking that into account i think we need to subtract out another four billion from this number to get our starting free cash flow because that isn't that is a um, money we're gonna have to spend over the life of the of the entity over the business because that is our growth strategy and our uh, our maintenance strategy so let's take 13 billion or 12.9 billion we'll take the average of those two and subtract out four billion, which was about our average uh, capex expenditure over the last couple years. Um, we get 8.9 billion dollars in free cash flow as our starting point. We have our growth rate. We have our 8.9 billion in our starting free cash flow. Uh, terminal value. Let's say because of their their license agreements, they were going to have escalators in their contracts. They're going to be able to pass through uh, an inflation rate. So let's give them that three percent terminal value as well. Um, and then lastly, the discount rate. How are we going to calculate this discount rate? Uh, as we discussed last time, uh, I think that their their financial performance warrants them having a lower discount rate than the entire market. Uh, for the entire market, my calculation would be 12%. So I think it's going to be somewhere lower than 12%. How much lower is where we can have a discussion and a debate on how much lower do we go. Uh, if you remember Bed Bath & Beyond, we got to 7%. Maybe that's a little bit aggressive, maybe not. Um, but given their debt load, I think they'll be a little bit higher than 7%. Uh, and also given my lack of knowledge about their business as a whole, not being an, an expert in in IT and enterprise solutions software and all those other technical terms out there, I think I'm going to need a little bit higher rate of return in this business because I'm not an expert. It's outside of my sphere of competence. Uh, a little bit more than than a retailer is, which is much more easier to understand. Um, so, if you look at the score here, we had that seven. We had the similar score to what we have at Bed Bath and Beyond, and we got to seven percent. 
uh, given there, there's a little bit more debt on the books and there's a lack of understanding in there, I'm going to add another 2% to this. I'm going to come up with a 9% basis. Um, if their cash flows weren't as recurring as they are, given that economic mode that once they sell something, they're pretty much locked in, I would want a little bit higher discount rate just because I don't understand the company. But given that I understand recurring revenue a little bit better, given my, my background, I can give them a little bit less of a discount. So I'm going to go with 9% as a discount rate here just based upon all those factors. I think 9% gives me a fair uh, uh, risk risk basis on, on Oracle. So I put all that in. I've got my basis. I got all my inputs in. Let's hit refresh. Uh, I get a fair value of 50.30. So currently the price is 35.38 on January 27, 2013. And so we have a margin of safety of 30%. So we're under fair value, but we're not quite to our margin of safety yet. We haven't quite hit that 50% yet. So it looks promising, but we're not quite there yet. So let's see what owner's earnings does. Refresh, clear everything out. So if we take the average here to get our adjusted free cash flow, 4.1 or 14.1. And we're going to subtract out our four billion in acquisitions. So we've got ten one in owners' earnings. Uh, same discount rate, and our growth rate. If we go with the fifteen percent again, we'll uh, we'll see what we get. So we refresh that. We get fifty six forty as our fair value. We're at thirty seven percent for our margin of safety. So we do have some margin of safety. We're just not quite there yet. So what does this mean? Um, I think Oracle becomes a watch and wait type company. Once this company, if there's a pullback in the uh, in the market and the company drops below this this twenty eight dollar twenty, or if we start to see the financials over time pick up and the stock stays flat, we could go back and review our analysis again. So there might be some opportunity here down the road, but just not today. So this is one of those that we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, that's that would be my <clears throat> my opinion on Oracle today is that we're just gonna we're gonna watch it see see what happens but it's got a lot of potential and there's a lot of good things out there about it I like its economic moat I like its recurring revenue nature and uh, I like how it's it's bending its capex uh, wisely to grow the company so I, I think there's there's a lot of positives here it's just that the price is not quite there yet um, so, in conclusion, I think we hold on Oracle. If you have any other companies that you would like to see go through this analysis, please put it in the comments below and let me know where your thoughts are. If you see a company that, that interests you, you can do a similar analysis on your own. Um, but I'd like to hear some feedback from you. If you have uh, inputs on, on Oracle that, that I don't see that may change the analysis, I would love to hear about them. Um, I look forward to the discussion. Thank you for listening and uh, good luck.